Well, hey there. Welcome to another one of my cheesy YouTube videos. Today, I am going through a carburetor and I figured I'd take you along with me. The carburetor is a Bendix Stromberg model WW two barrel carburetor. Came off of my 1972 Dodge D600 truck, the 318. So first thing I had to do was identify the carburetor, which on this particular carburetor, it is cast into this upper body of the carburetor. Next thing I had to do was figure out what series of the Stromberg WW did I have so I could get the right rebuild kit. I never quite pinned that down. And also in the process, I decided not to put a kit in it. I just want to get the truck running and just go through it, make sure all the passages are clear, look for any problems. There's supposed to be a stamp on this part of the top cover. And I can barely make out some numbering, but it's not legible. So what I had to do is I just went through the internet and just looked around trying to find clues to tell me which build or series this carburetor is. I think I've got it narrowed down to being a 7150 kit. And what leads me to that is the, the accelerator pump plunger. This particular one has multiple notches or grooves cut in it. And that was the only kit that has this particular plunger on the website that I was on. So, anyways, all I want to do is get the old truck running. It's just, uh, I'm not sure why I even bought the truck. Let's put it that way. It's, it's nothing I want to go spending a lot of money on. If I can get it running and maybe move some dirt around on my little ranch, that'd be great. So let's talk about how this carburetor is supposed to work. Built, it looks something like this. So I took her apart, not knowing what I would see inside. And everything actually looked pretty darn good. So it's another reason why I'm not worried about getting a kit. Technically, yes, I should put a kit in it. Why? For no other reasons, this carburetors rely a lot on vacuum to work right. And different passages may bring vacuum to different parts. So if you got old gaskets that have been stamped, if you screw them back on, there's a possibility there may be vacuum leaks in these old gaskets. So that by itself is a good reason. But anyways, so how does a carburetor work? Well, the main part of the carburetor is the air horn. And that's just these passages where air goes through and everything else just operates off the air horn. So you got air sucking down and this bolts to your intake manifold, of course, and you got your throttle plate, which regulates your, your flow, your air. So, so you got your air horn, let's just say you got air passing through there. Now you need to get fuel into the air passage. And what the carburetor does, it it, it um, supplies a mixture of fuel and air to run the engine. So let's talk about the bowl. <clears throat> the bowl is what stores the fuel. And inside the bowl, you got a float. This particular float is a little, blast, little brass float. And a part of your diagnosing of a carburetor is to make sure this float doesn't have pinholes in it. So in a few minutes, I need to take this float and I need to stick it in some gasoline and look for air bubbles. 
if the carburetor was used recently, let's say you know they brought it to my shop and stopped, and I and then I took it off and took it apart, then I would take this float and I would shake it, and I would listen for fuel inside the bowl, because these will get pinholes in them, and then you'll wind up with fuel inside the bowl, and then your float doesn't work properly, and your carburetor will be flooding all the time. That bowl, when it floats up to a certain point, it hits the needle valve. Needle valves, this one's a little rubber type tit on it. And it sits inside the inlet fitting and it pushes in and it shuts the flow of fuel off into the carburetor. And then as a fuel gets used in the, in the bowl, the, the float drops down and the needle valve is able to move back and let more fuel in. So it's always moving back and forth. So now you got a bowl full of fuel. You got air passing through your air horn, but you need to be able to draw fuel from the bowl into the air horn. And that's done through passageways. And this is a two barrel, so you got two air horns. And you'll see where this passageway, both passageways get narrow. That's called a ventry. They, they get narrow. And what a ventry does is air, as it passes through the air horn, if it's forced to go through a smaller space, it speeds up and the molecules expand and creates a negative pressure. Atmosphere pressure here gets down, hits the ventry, comes through the ventry, now it's a negative pressure. So that negative pressure is what draws air, that vacuum draws air or fuel from the bowl into the air stream going through the air horn. This has got a second ventry. So the bottom of this ventry is right about the beginning of the ventry inside. So you got this maximum vacuum right, right in here, and that is sucking air through this ventry, which creates, it, which creates its own vacuum. It increases the vacuum, which better at drawing the fuel air mixture. Now, I just said fuel air mixture. Let's talk about that real quick. There are passageways in this carburetor. Well, the first thing there is, for each bowl, if I flip it upside down, there's a jet. A jet is just a, usually a screw-in brass piece, or sometimes they're pressed in, and it's a restriction of, it restricts the amount of fuel that can pass through to that passageway. So here are two jets, one for each bowl. And that re restricts the fuel and going out and, and it comes out through right here, there's an opening. And also right in here, there's these little air jets. Here's one right here, very fine hole. They sit down inside of here. <clears throat> and they allow air to pass into the fuel stream that's coming up through this tubing right here. If not, then the fuel droplets coming out would be big droplets. They wouldn't be atomized good at all, and it would not burn as good. It would burn rich. You need good atomization. Atomization is if you take a squirt bottle and you can screw it, adjust your squirt bottle to where it's on the squirt mode, which is just a stream coming out. Or you can adjust it where it's a, poof, a mist. That's atomization. That mist. And that's what you want coming out here is more atomized. More air mixed in with your fuel. So that's your main jet. That's when it's just running normal speeds. So before, before you, um, and I'll have to take a, I got a, a welding tip cleaner here and I'll go through the jets and make sure that I don't find anything wrong, all the passageways. So before we're going high speed, there's two other things we gotta do. One is we need to, when you stomp on it, good old fashioned cars, fuel injection, you don't do it. So many people watching may not realize it, but it used to be before you start your car, you hit your pedal maybe once or twice, boom, boom. What you did there, one thing you did, is you kicked your linkage over and you closed your choke. 
Well, this one's got a manual choke. So actually this, in this case, you'd pull the lever on the dash and close the choke. But if it's an automatic choke, it would, it would close the choke. So what the choke does is this sits over top of, the, this is the top of the carburetor. The choke does, it close off all the air or almost all the air in the passageway. And what that does, it creates a big vacuum inside there just when you're cranking. And that's going to help draw fuel into the, into the intake manifold so it can be burned. And also when you hit that boom, boom, the, the two steps on your, when you, when you hit your gas pedal once or twice, anytime you hit your gas pedal, what you're doing there, you're allowing the fuel pump to push fuel into the air horn. That's an accelerator pump. It could be a pump like that or it can be a diaphragm. Some of them got a little flat diaphragm. And this is the, the ports for the, where the, this is the ports where the accelerator pump dumps fuel into the stream. And that also works when you, when you go into traffic and you romp on it, you, when you only mash down on your, your throttle kind of aggressively. With your throttle plates closed, it's creating a vacuum on the bottom of this plate and it's drawing fuel through these little pinholes down here. But when you throw them open, you're no longer creating that vacuum to allow fuel to pass through them pinholes. So now you got what they call a dead spot. That's where it just took a big gulp of air with barely any fuel or no fuel in it. And then the, driving an old car, you might have remembered the day where you mash and it goes, then it takes off. And that is that dead spot. So that accelerator pump drops fuel into there temp momentarily. So when they're thrown open, that dead that air will have some fuel in it and it'll help accelerate. So that accelerator pump, that's what that does. And there'll be a check valve on the bottom here. And this, so when you go, when the plunger goes down, it doesn't just push the fuel back up into the bowl. And there should be a check valve down inside of the, the housing where the fuel line, because the fuel accelerator pump goes through a passage, then up to this hole right here. And your check ball, there should be a check ball in that hole. And what that does, that helps prevent the ventries from sucking fuel through the accelerator pump into the airstream. So we've talked about the accelerator pump. We've talked about the fuel bowl. Fuel bowls float, it, the float level is critical as far as maintaining the right level of fuel in the bowl. Um, it may run richer if there's too much fuel. It may too, run too lean if there's not enough fuel. So, now, let's talk about the idle circuit. So you're idling. Your, your throttle plate is closed and it's just idling along and you'll have a adjustment screw right here that adjusts your throttle so it's just initially you might have to adjust this to get the right throttle idle maybe it idles at 650 or whatever it idles at and that will crack the plate the necessary amount to get the right idle rpms the little holes right here and right here so with this plate closed, this gobs of vacuum the engine's got going on down here below the plate will draw fuel through these idle ports. And also, it's a fuel-air mixture because it also in allows air inside the carburetor mixes with that fuel. Then as the throttle plate opens, you'll see there's more holes. There's another hole up here. There's another hole up here and it starts to draw off both sets of holes because as it opens, it's, it's losing the vacuum and these, this bottom hole may not have enough vacuum on to draw air through. So it, there's more holes to help increase the um, ability of fuel to enter the system. Now you know the fuel pump, the accelerator pump, how it works and the main jets, how they work. And now the, the idle system, how it works and how that's where another reason why gaskets are important because it's taking the idle circuit through this gasket right here. It's taking the idle circuit, 
down to this bottom plate. If this gasket had leaks or anything like that, that would also affect its ability to, for the outer circuit to work right. But now, gasket's not broke. If it was broke, I definitely would have replaced them, which would have been a kit. When you romp down on it, or when you're riding, when you're riding, running fast, you know, pedal to the floor, working the engine, really working it, then there's a circuit on here that's a vacuum and a spring circuit that work against each other or with each other, however you want to say it. <clears throat> and that's this little spring right here. This plunger on a spring is reaching down into this bowl and it's pushing on that little tit on top of this valve, like so. And when it's running, normally with the highest amount of vacuum or high vacuum inside the manifold, this valve is drawn, this plunger is drawn off of the valve. But when you're asking for high demand, the throttle plates are wide open, the vacuum can no longer hold the spring tension back and this spring pushes this plunger out, which hits this little tit on the bottom of this valve, which opens up and it allows additional fuel to pass into the um, main main jet. So you increase the the fuel. So right now I'm going to, I'm just going to take my pipe cleaners. I'm just going to go through all, all the little jets and ports. Then I'm going to put it back together. I'm going to put, this is um, your idle fuel mixture screws. They go into the base right here. One for each barrel. And I'll tighten them up all the way down till they bottom out and I'll back them off a turn and a half for initial setting. And if I have to adjust it while it's island or anything, then I can play with it. On modern carburetors, there's real no modern carburetors. The last of the carburetors back in the 80s when they were playing with emissions and trying to make the environment cleaner, they did away with a few, few things. And they also, they one of the things, one of the things they did away with was the ability to adjust your idle. This would be plugged off to where you can't can't go in there and adjust it. Let me get to work cleaning. You don't need to watch me do that. The float bowl pin is held in place by a very small wire spring. I just spent probably a half hour trying to get that spring in there. So I thought I would, I'd elaborate on how I found the easiest way to do it. Just keep in mind while you're fighting that spring, you might want to keep things covered up because it got away from me and I spent probably 10 minutes on the floor looking for it. But once I got the spring in, I set, used two screwdrivers to push the bottom edges in and I pushed them in hard and it allowed the top to drop down and go over this little keeper right here. Just thought I'd mention that because that was a pain in the butt. Somewhere way down here is an engine and I just got done laying on my belly installing that carburetor. And let me show you how she, how well she worked. Well, there you have it. Another successful aimless repair video. Remember, if you love life and learning new things, go aimless.com.